Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for part two. I just wanted to show you when those two sticks will actually be joined together and that's going to be in or it's described in Ezekiel 37 and I'm going to start reading from I guess I'll start reading from verse 11. I guess that would be a good point to start reading. And it says over here, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you unto the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land and you shall know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord the word of the Lord came again unto me saying moreover thou son of man take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and the children of Israel his companions then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel his companions. So over here you have Judah and Israel and you have the two sticks and this is right after the resurrection. I know a lot of people teach this as the birth of the nation of Israel but if you read the description you'll see that it's actually talking about the restoration, the redemption. God is putting his spirit in the people of Israel. So this is the redemption. It's more than just the, the physical nation of Israel. This is talking about the holy nation of Israel being born when this happens. So this was only fulfilled in part by Israel becoming a nation it will be fulfilled in full at the resurrection and when Jesus comes at the second coming and so it says more, moreover well, okay I read that part it says and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thy hand and when the children of the people shall speak unto thee saying wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and will bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall no more be two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms. Jonathan Cleck talks about the kingdom divided. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. And they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall, be, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever 
and my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle shall be with them, yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people, and the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So this is not talking about 1947. This is talking about the second coming. And this happens at the time of the resurrection of the dead. That's when the two sticks come together, which is represented by the two witnesses. And just following this is the Gog Magog invasion. It happens right, right at the time of the rapture. And that's why Israel is at peace. And that's why they're living in unwalled villages because the, reser the, the rapture has already occurred. And this is referring to spiritual Israel. So it's just like Isaiah 14, which I've talked about before, how it describes the land being at rest. And here you see the word cleave again. So like I said, this is a very important word. It has multiple meanings. Well, actually, all those meanings are really one meaning, but it's expressed in multiple ways. And it says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them. That's the Jews, that's the Gentiles being joined with the Jews, and they shall cleave. So it's the two sticks cleaving and together and becoming one, which is what will happen at the rapture when Jesus consummates the covenant, which is more than just confirming the covenant. This will be a one time event because the covenant only gets consummated once and that didn't happen yet the first time it'll happen when he comes back and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased, the Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Okay, so over here it's talking about the oppressor. How has the oppressor ceased the king of Babylon? Because as you know, Gog is going to be destroyed on the mountains of Israel. And according to Natan, that, that was going to only take about a, a couple of weeks for the Gog-Magog war. And then the king of Babylon is going to be destroyed. And then it says over here, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, because God himself is going to destroy the staff of the wicked, and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in angers, is, is persecuted and unhindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. So this is the rapture. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. And when I was describing... Isaiah 14 some time ago and I mentioned this word in the Hebrew 
this word shakab, which means to lie down, and it's talking about sexual relations. And I had said that was, uh, I had said it was a euphemism, I actually meant to say it was a metaphor, but what I'm beginning to realize is, and, and the reason I said that is because I knew that Jesus was already in the bride chamber for three and a half years, and nothing like that happened before, so I thought when he comes back, it won't be literal, but what I'm realizing is that this is actually the consummation of the covenant, and it, it will be literal, just like there was a literal event that caused the fall of Adam and Eve and the fall in the garden, there will be a literal event that will restore it. And then this part is talking about what's going on earth. This, uh, up until this point, it's talking about the rapture and the restoration. And then the rest of it is talking about what's happening below. And it says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It's talking about Gog. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy veals, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? So when the oppressor is destroyed and he meets hell beneath, he meets those who are in the grave, and this is when Lucifer falls from heaven. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit, and they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the nations? And this word narrowly in the Greek is a, is a word that means wonder. They will look at thee with wonder. It's the same word that's used in the book of Revelation. Okay, you see that word right here? I just pulled it up. It's this word right here, which means marvel, amazement, wonder, and it's the same word that's used in Revelation 13, where it says, and one of its heads looked as though it had been fatally wounded, and its fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled at the beast. It's the same word that was used there. And then it says, That made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the prisoners, all the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one to his own house. But thou art cast out of the grave like an abominable branch. So it's God himself that's going to slay Gog, but then he's going to turn around and cast him out of the grave. And as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot, thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. And like I've said before, this is all a battle as to who's going to possess the land. And it looks like I'm about out of time, so I'll have to continue in the next video.